What is up guys? Welcome to How to Kill a YouTube Channel 101 with Aster J. Today we are going to be reviewing how badly I have managed my YouTube channel in the last couple of months. Um, I haven't been uploading much, but this is pretty much a mandatory upload. NPL Miners are back, and we are back today with uh, draft analysis. Uh, I have to show you guys my draft. If any of you caught the interview uh, with me on the official NPL channel, you would have already seen my draft. It was up on screen. Uh, for the entirety of the video, but for those of you that didn't catch it, let's go over what we picked. So, we're going to hop right into it. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. I don't usually do this with my uh, draft analysis, but I'm just going to go over the basics, every mon, the, the cores that I d decided to draft. So, first mon, I decided to go back to my Roots of March Madness and pick up Tabu Bulu, as you can see on your screen. Uh, Tabu Bulu, of course, an amazing breaker with grassy terrain uh, from Grassy Surge, able to fire off very powerful wood hammers. There aren't many switch-ins in the game, Celesteela and Skarmory being two of the best. Uh, in Draft League format, it's extremely difficult to switch into this mon. Uh, some other steel types are able to do it uh, decently well, things like uh, Metagross and Jirachi come to mind. But um, yeah, so this is a great breaker. Uh, access to Leech Seed, it's a great setup sweeper uh, as well with Bulk Up and Swords Dance. Uh, gets access to Brutal Swing, uh, Super Power, Stone Edge, so some pretty cool coverage. Uh, special Sided, Special Attack isn't horrible at 85, obviously it's not as great as its physical attack, but if you want to utilize its Fairy Stab, something like Dazzling Gleam might be useful. Focus Blast for things with, that are weaker on the, uh, the Special Side. Mega Horn, of course, is great for catching bulky Psychics, uh, things like the Lotties and whatnot. Uh, things like Shaman as well, or uh, Tangrowth that want to stop you. Um, bulky Grasses, essentially that are able to uh, to synth up and stall you out uh, or just make you take so much recoil that you can't handle it. Uh, things like Taunt, a uh, fast Taunter is nice. It's not super fast, of course, base 75 speed. Uh, we got Nature's Madness, of course. This is not one of my Zemons, by the way, if you guys are wondering. This is not one of them. Uh, also gets access to Zen Headbutt for Grass and Poison types, which would otherwise be able to take uh, Grass moves and four times resist them pretty well. Uh, so it gets very nice coverage overall. I like this Mon. A very good Scarfer, Choice Bander, things like that. Speaking of good Choice Band and Choice Scarf Mons, our next pick was, uh, oh by the way, I'll go over the nicknames, this is Azuma, the, uh, the top of Wulu. Next up we have Flare the Victini. Both of these are going to be shiny for me because we are using custom games, we are able to uh, use shiny Wulu even though it's not released. And uh, we got shiny Victini right here with the uh, Victory Star ability of course making V Create. Uh, one of the most powerful moves in the game. It hit 100% of the time. Things like Fusion Bolt and, uh, or rather, uh, Bolt Strike. Excuse me. Uh, Bolt Strike and uh, other inaccurate moves like Focus Blast and whatnot hit a lot more accurately than they normally would. Blue Flare, of course, great on the special side. It's a great mixed attacker. Uh, like I said, good Bander, good Scarfer. Uh, it's even good with Specs if, if the matchup calls for it. Uh, Min Speed can run good Trick Room sets. As you can see, I have it set to zero here. It hits 184. Uh, this is uh, one of my Trick Roomers on the team. Very nice mod overall, great coverage. Uh, very thre very threatening, uh, very, very threatening with its coverage. Uh, the fact that it can U-turn give me momentum. One of the big things is that uh, Bulu is going to need to get rid of Steel types uh, that are in the way. Superpower is all it is not always super reliable uh, because it does lower your own attack in the process. People can play around that. Uh, so Victini is a great mon to be able to snuff out uh, Steel types and U-turn on them. Um, on the switch out, right? So you, you're not going to stay in with your steel type with your scissor because you need it to wall Bulu. Well, U turn gives you the momentum. Or whatever their answer to Victini is, uh, you get in Bulu. Or the next mon on our draft, Vastia the Mamoswine. Uh, yet another mon that uh, can break things that Bulu doesn't like dealing with. Like I said, uh, bulky steels, flying types uh, in general uh, do not appreciate this mon. Bulu otherwise would would struggle with uh, flying type mons. You think of your common thunderous forms, uh, tornadus, uh, landorus, things like that. Uh, landorus obviously a little bit less because of the ground typing, but um, Amoswine is able to deal with those relatively well. Uh, able to check things like offensively check things like Garchomp that would otherwise carry earthquake and poison jab for these two respectively. Uh, has to fear ice shard all of a sudden from Amoswine. Obviously, um, grassy terrain is going to weaken earthquake. Which helps Victini, but it hinders Mamoswine a little bit. But you got to keep in mind that Grassy Terrain is not always going to be up. And Mamoswine's Ice Stab alone can typically deal a lot of damage. Uh, so that is going to be a huge a nuisance uh, for people. I love Mamoswine. I've used it before in the past. So uh, Thick Fat and Oblivious, great abilities. Thick Fat taking away the, uh, the Ice Neutrality. 
and the fire weakness and reducing them to a resist and a, uh, a neutral hit respectively. And uh, of course, great items that this thing can rock as well. Choice Scarf, Choice Band, we mentioned those, Life Orb. Uh, assault Vest, I've seen Assault Vest utilized very well. Uh, multiple Berries, you can run Bibiri. Uh, for Scizor's Bullet Punch, for example, if that becomes a problem. Uh, you guys know how this works, so I won't go too far into it. Freeze Dry is also a very good tool that I didn't mention, and uh, this thing does get priority in Ice Shard, like I said. It's my first Stealth Rocker, and uh, my second Stealth Rocker I get on the next round. Uh, it's going to be my Steel type. Now, a big problem that I had in Miners last season was that my Steel type was not a resist to fairies, and I didn't learn my lesson, apparently. Uh, I picked up Cobalion and Cobalion does not deal with fairies too well um, But it does have the steel typing. It's a very nice bulky mon great on the physical side good HP great defense Special defense it's lacking a little bit, but it's still usable. Uh, it's not a horrible stat. It's 72 uh, 108 speed very nice uh, setup mon with uh, swords dance and rock polish uh, access to close combat iron head uh, pretty much all you're gonna really be using on the physical side uh, maybe sometimes bounce I guess um, poison Jab is nice uh, for hitting certain, I don't know, grass types, I guess. Uh, Stone Edge is really good. X Scissor, uh, Zen Headbutt, so it gets decent coverage. Not great, not horrible, though. Uh, Stealth Rocks is the big thing. Uh, gets Fast Taunt, which is really nice, like very fast taunt, faster than the others. I believe all four of my first four picks have Taunt, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Do you, do you get Taunt, Mount Swine? Maybe it's just the, uh, the first two and Cobalion, it might be. Yeah, it seems to be that way. But yeah, so Fast Taunt, like I said. Uh, setup Mon gets Roar for phasing, which is always nice. I have a few phasers, so I'm not too worried about uh, Setup or anything like that. It gets Psych Up, I actually didn't know that. Magnarize is cool uh, because you're able to uh, beat ground types 1v1 in most scenarios. Other than things that like Hippowdon, which can phase you out. Uh, or Mamoswine, <laughs> um, which can run superpower, things like that. But in, a, in any other case, like, Magnet Rise is cool. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a nice mon. I like having it. Uh, Volt Switch is also really cool for uh, Bulu. Get in, uh, once again, another mon that can break certain steel types. Volt Switch, get in Bulu. Nice uh, nice synergy between these four, I think. Uh, next up, we got Mega Blastoise. We get the Mega. And uh, so far, my team is actually not looking too fast. And that's actually a common theme uh, with my team is that it's actually not fast at all. Uh, that was the one complaint that I had from uh, other coaches about my draft. And I do agree. Uh, I tried to keep it as slow as possible. Well, not as slow as possible. Uh, I was still trying to draft speed somewhere. But uh, I didn't really focus on speed as much uh, this time around. I focused on bulk, as you guys can see. A lot of my mons have really good bulk somewhere uh, on their stats. And Mega Blastoise is no exception. Uh, 79. 120, 115 on its defenses, and monstrous 135 special attack. Uh, gets access to essentially four stabs, I believe. Water, uh, dragon with dragon pulse. Uh, or sphere gives it fighting, and then uh, dark pulse gives it dark. So it's got four stabs, uh, which is really cool. Uh, rapid spin is going to be nice for Victini. That's going to be the big thing. And uh, yeah, just uh, overall great mon. Gets access to a lot of good special coverage. Flash cannon is something that I've uh, used recently. Ice beam. Uh, that I didn't mention, Focus Blast and, and Aura Sphere. Obviously, you want to use Aura Sphere over Focus Blast because Aura Sphere gets the boost from Mega Launcher. And uh, just a very nice bulky mon. Doesn't get any kind of uh, its own recovery, which is the one ick I have about it. But um, Bulu gives it the recovery that it needs uh, to some extent. And uh, I do have Wish Pass on the team, as you guys are going to see later. Uh, as you can see, I'm focusing my team a lot on being grounded in the first few picks. And then I, I shift over to... Uh, getting things off the ground because I don't want to be weak to ground spam either. Because um, there are going to be matchups where Bulu just doesn't fare well. Even though my opponent has like a really strong ground type uh, that Bulu could potentially break. Uh, it's not always going to work out that way. So I do want things off the ground just to just to, um, to level that. So uh, our next pick after Mega Blastoise is going to be Cresselia. Uh, Cresselia, the Moonduck Hisui. Uh, first part of my very, very defensive core as you guys are going to see. Uh, this is a very nice mon. Calm Mind, of course. You guys know the set. Calm Mind, uh, Moonlight, Psyshock, Moonblast, I believe it is. Uh, it's got other sets, of course. It can go dual screens. It can Lunar Dance into other other mons. Uh, it can just. It can actually be pretty powerful uh, offensively. It can run Trick Room, so it's my second Trick Roomer alongside Victini. So I can, like I said, my draft is not too fast, so I can focus on getting up Trick Room. 
uh, if I need to in a matchup, so that's always an option. Uh, Thunder Wave, Toxic, those uh, beautiful moves. You gotta love status. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Gravity is really cool for Mamoswine. If I decide to run a Scarf Mamoswine, I can just Gravity everything to the ground and just, uh, you know, just start Earthquaking. Uh, that's always nice as long as Grassy Terrain isn't up, of course. Uh, I might find interactions where Bulu and uh, Mamoswine end up conflicting with each other, but I'll, I'll figure it out as the season goes on. Uh, pretty cool coverage overall. Uh, some nice Ice Beam, Moon Blast, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball. Um, got Signal Beam, uh, as well as, uh, what did I just see? Uh, there was Charge Beam in there, Grass Knot, and Energy Ball. So uh, I can pretty much hit most things that it wants to. Some hidden powers can uh, can supplement as well if it needs to, uh, and Cresselia isn't really weak to anything, uh, realistically, unless it's very strong stab, uh, super effective moves. Everything else it can pretty much handle, uh, except like really powerful wall breakers like Bulu, like Victini, then it struggles a little bit, but uh, for the most part, Cresselia can handle what it needs to handle, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the Moonduck. Let's move on to the next pick, which is Grandina, the Salamence, Salamence, excuse me. Um, this is pronounced Grandina, by the way. Yeah, so, uh, this, uh, it's a pretty cool Mon right here. Uh, it's got, uh, Intimidate for, uh, physical bulk. If I need to run it as a physical check, this was run against me in March Madness as a check to Bulu. So, uh, that's not, obviously not something that I'm going to need to worry about, uh, this season of Miners because I have Bulu. But, uh, to check other things, it can do a pretty good job. It does get Roost, does get Defog, so it is another form of hazard removal, uh, is going to help out Victini a little bit if I need to. Uh, I have other forms of hazard control, of course, like I said, fast taunts and stuff like that, so I'm going to have to be careful with uh, with rocks a little bit, but uh, if Victini is rocking leftovers, for example, it's not going to lose all the health in the world. Uh, it gets a few extra switch-ins as well, uh, as well as if Grassy Terrain is up, which is something that I, I kept in mind when drafting. Uh, I knew that I didn't need to focus too heavily on hazard removal, and I figured that Salamence plus Blastoise would be enough. Uh, that's probably two of the best hazard removers in the game, honestly. Um, you don't want to focus Salamence into a defogging role too often, but normally paired with Victini, Salamence is going to be run in a defensive role. Um, like to take on ground types, to take on water types, for example. Like you don't you don't care about it getting burned if it's not a physical set. Uh, if it's running toxic to deal with things like Suicune, for example. So, yeah. Um, cool Mon. Uh, it's also my Z Mon. As you can see, I have a Fly and EMZ on it. Uh, so if I do run want to run the uh, the setup sweeping set, uh, Salamence is one of my fastest mons on my team. It ties with Victini, uh, and it's below uh, Cobalion by eight points. But with a DD up, this thing becomes a huge threat. All of a sudden, packing the right coverage, of course, it gets access to things like Crunch, Iron Tail. Uh, so you can run Dark EMZ, Steel EMZ, Ground EMZ with Earthquake, uh, Fear EMZ with Fire Blast, which is something I did with Flygon in the tryout tournament. Uh, to take on Skarmory, um, powerful Dragon Stab like Outrage or Dragon Claw with uh, with Dragonium Z. Uh, of course, there's Fly with Flyanium, uh, which you guys see on the set here. There's Aqua Tail with uh, Waterium, and uh, pretty much it gets a plethora of physical coverage. It can pretty much hit anything that it wants to, uh, better than any other Mon on my team, I would say. Victini is a close second, uh, so yeah, this uh, this Mon is something to fear and something to prep for, for all of my opponents, uh, for sure. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's Salamence for you. It's a pretty straightforward one. And, uh, next up, we have, uh, the second part of my, uh, incredible defensive core that I've built, uh, which is a Cresselia plus Umbreon. And, uh, the only weakness that Umbreon and Cresselia share is Bug. And I'm gonna fix that with my next pick, but as you guys could see, uh, I have Cobalion already, uh, and I have Salamence, both of which resist Bug very well. So, uh, it's not a huge issue. I could create a defensive core with Cresselia, Umbreon, plus either one of those two, and my next Mon, but let's focus on Umbreon for a second. Uh, this thing is extremely bulky, 95, 110, 130. Uh, better on the special side, obviously. Synchronize makes it so that uh, things that want to toxic you, which is one of Cresselia's biggest, we biggest weaknesses, by the way, is to get status. Um, and which is one of the reasons that I picked up Umbreon, because it's a cleric, and it, and it can heal Bell off... Um, toxic and on top of that if something wants to toxic Cresselia uh, I can switch an Umbreon pass back the toxic and later heal bell it off uh, and basically Umbreon's back to life uh, great HP stat of 95 by the way these both get wish I have double wish support 
I didn't mention this, but Salamence does get Wish, uh, with the same HP stat as Umbreon, so it can pass Wishes that are just as big as Umbreon, which is pretty cool, actually, 394 is a lot of HP, uh, pass it to most mons in the game with, like, base 70 to 80 HP, and they're recovering, like, 70 to 80 percent of their health, which is really awesome. Um, leftovers, obviously, item of choice, uh, can run, uh, fairy reducing berry, bug, uh, fighting, its biggest weaknesses, of course, uh, can run Rocky Helmet for, uh, for, uh, extra chip damage on physical threats, uh, Salamence can kind of do the same, uh, it does get its own form of recovery, which is really nice, it gets Moonlight, of course, uh, if I need to run that, but Wish Protect is what you're normally going to see on this, um, Umbreon is a little bit of setup fodder. Uh, that's the one issue I have with it, is that it is setup fodder, so I'm gonna have to be very careful with that. Um, foul play kind of uh, mitigates that a little bit uh, for physical setup sweepers, anyway, not for special. And um, of course, uh, this thing does get baton pass, which is really nice. It's a it's a form of momentum again, going back to Bulu, to Victini, uh, to Cobalion, all of that uh, momentum gaining. So. I have another form of, uh, of momentum, momentum grabbing right here with uh, with Baton Pass. Uh, access to a Pursuit, which is really nice. Uh, Umbreon does a pretty good job at checking uh, most Psychic types, even if they have fighting coverage, just because of its huge special defense stat, and the fact that a lot of Psychic types rely on Focus Blast to be able to hit Umbreon for super effective damage. You look at things like Alakazam, and uh, a lot of times those moves aren't going to hit and what Umbreon gets is nice pursuit trapping, so uh, that's one thing. It also gets Sucker Punch if you need it. Um, I know Jar used Taunt to beat an opposing Cresselia, actually, uh, last season. In Miners, it was uh, Fog's Cresselia, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, just nice sets overall. Curse is really cool because you can baton pass Curses. Uh, and uh, for example, with a uh, with the power, not the power orb, is it the power orb? Uh, no. Whatever re resets your stats as soon as one of them goes down, and I can't remember what it is. Um, but you curse, you lose your speed, you get it back, you baton pass out the boosts into something like Bulu, or Victini, or Mamoswine, or Blastoise, or uh, Salamence. Uh, basically, any one of my physical attackers. Blastoise isn't a physical attacker, obviously, but with a defense boost, it can do a lot of work. Uh, that, that's a cool interaction I have there with Curse Baton Pass. Uh, that's always an option. Uh, I think Nips <laughs> was one of the uh, biggest users of that in the UCL. We won't go too far into that, though. Uh, but yeah, Umbreon is pretty straightforward. It it does one thing very well, and that's just sit there and, you know, wish, protect, wish, pass. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Umbreon. That's Mira. Uh, I didn't talk about my other nicknames. Hold on a sec. Sure, you guys saw them, but uh, we got Ren the Cobalion, Loxer the Mega Blastoise, and uh, Hisui the Cresselia. I think I mentioned this one, but let's move on. Uh, after Umbreon, uh, like I said, I wanted to complete the defensive core with something that could take bug moves very well. And for the most part, Weezing can. Um, very nice Mon. It can handle most bugs on its own because of its access to Flamethrower. You think of things like uh, Fortress and uh, more offensive bugs, obviously, like Scizor and Mega Scizor. It's able to take them on very, very nicely. Uh, again, another Mon that can utilize Rocky Helmet very well. Does get a form of recovery and pain split. Not the most reliable, uh, but with its relatively low HP stat of 65, it can heal up a lot of, of, of health and uh, take away a lot of HP at the same time, which is really nice. A very good fairy check in general. Uh, access to clear smog to beat fairies that can set up like Sylveon. Uh, it has access to uh, Sludge Bomb, of course. Destiny Bond is a really cool utility move uh, to force your opponent into a status move on the following turn. Haze is really nice as well uh, for getting rid of boosts. Um, just a, a very nice Mon. Uh, access to Toxic Spikes, this is the big thing, is that uh, Bulu with any form of hazards up becomes a huge threat because your opponent can't repeatedly switch in um, to Bulu even if they do have a check uh, per se. Like, uh, the only, like I said, the only real things are going to be Skarmory and uh, and Celesteela, and that's the exact reason that I got Victini, because it's bulky enough to take any one of their hits, including Celesteela's Earthquake, and just fire back and kill them. So, ha, uh, fire. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we got uh, Will-O-Wisp on deck, which is really nice for physical attackers, big physical bugs, things like Scallopede, whatnot. And uh, yeah, just a, a nice Mon overall. I believe it also gets Foul Play, if I'm not mistaken. I could be. I usually am. Yes, I am. Okay. So I'm wrong about that, it doesn't get foul play, so I can't check things like SD, um, 
Scalopede, for example, if it's not carrying Flamethrower, if it's purely relying on, um, uh, what, what was I just saying, on Will-O-Wisp, then you're kind of screwed if it gets behind a sub and starts setting up SDs. Uh, but for the most part, Weezing can check most bugs and a lot of a lot of things, really. Uh, the, the Levitate ability is amazing because it gives it only one weakness, which is Psychic. And as you guys saw, Umbreon and uh, Cresselia. So, yeah, that's uh, that's an awesome defensive core. I'm really happy to have it. Weezing was pretty cheap. Now, uh, for my last Mon, uh, I debated between two because my team, um, Bulu, Victini, Mamoswine, Cobalion, Mega Blastoise, uh, Cresselia, Salamence, Umbreon, Weezing. I was looking kind of weak to flying types, and I really, really wanted a rock type on this team, which I didn't have yet, and I wanted something to be able to check birds. But I figured that the combination of Mamoswine plus my defensive core should be able to take those on uh, most dangerous flying types. And when you think of flying types, a lot of them don't utilize their flying stab very well. Like the big ones would be Staraptor, Braviary, like not a lot come to mind. Like the most important flying types in the format uh, are things like the Thundiform, Zapdos, uh, Tornado Therian, which uses hurricane which misses uh so like a lot of them don't use their flying stab to the full potential so you don't have to worry about it that much so i figured that with mammoth swine with my defensive core i should be able to take them on decently well uh, my defensive core is a little weak to taunt so i'm gonna have to play around that a little bit uh but anyway i figured that my flying weakness wasn't as important as getting a powerful special wall breaker to complement uh, Mega Blastoise, and uh, one thing that Mega Blastoise has a very hard time breaking is bulky water types. Like it does not get anything for bulky waters. Like HP Electric and HP Grass do nothing uh, to most. You look at things like Suicune, Milotic, whatnot. Uh, so I needed a powerful Electric type and potentially another Mon that could function under Trick Room with uh, Cresselia and Victini, and that could also Volt Switch into Tabu Lulu. That was the big things. So, with the points I had remaining, I was able to pick up Vikavolt, which I have seen do a lot of work as of late. Uh, ignore Assault Vest plus Agility Roost, like, that's not a thing, but uh, Assault Vest is an option on this mod because it's very, very bulky, actually. 77, 90, and 75 might not look like a lot, but when you consider it's typing, like, when you're hitting Galvantula with an attack, right, um, it's usually, like, Landorus's Earthquake, uh, you think OU, um, you, you can hit it with, uh, like, Crocodile's Earthquake and Yu Yu. Uh, it's things that do a lot of damage. Uh, and I'm saying Earthquake, like, ignore the fact that this thing has Levitate, but it's moves that do a lot of damage to Galvantula, because Galvantula, I'll just bring it up here, is extremely frail. Like, 70, 60, 60 is nothing compared to 77, 90, 75. So... The things that would 2-hit KO Galvantula, no longer 2-hit KO Vikavolt, and finding super effective coverage for this thing is quite difficult considering its typing. Like, flying is neutral. You have fire that's super effective. Um, let me run through the types real quick, try to figure out what is super effective on this. I think it's fire. Um, ground doesn't hit it because of levitate, and even if it did, it would be neutral. Rock. Okay, so uh, fire and rock. I think are actually the only two typings that are super effective against Vikavolt. So it's it's very, very hard to hit this thing for super effective. And um, the fact that it gets access to Roost uh, and it's able to just set up agilities in your face and hit with a base 145 special attack, which is ridiculous. Uh, pair this with choice specs, uh, life orbits, it gets crazy. Uh, Volt switch for momentum, of course. Its speed is, of course, extremely low, which makes it volatile in Trick Room. But outside of Trick Room, it's... Um, it's always going to get outsped, essentially. It's very hard to make this thing outspeed anything. But with access to basically the same kind of coverage you see with Galvantula, it gets Energy Ball, uh, Hidden Powers, of course, uh, Bug Buzz and Thunderbolt Volt Switch, uh, and it also gets access to uh, Flying Moves, which is cool, Air Slash uh, for hitting things, I don't know, like Chestnut, for example, uh, that would otherwise take its hits quite well, including Bug Buzz. Um... What else does it get access to? Uh, it gets status again with Thunder Wave Toxic, of course. Everything gets toxic. I mean, like, it's a pre it's pretty much just a hard hitter. There's not too much to say about it. Um, it's quite simple in that respect. Uh, but, like, 
you think about electric types and you think um, the best coverage that you can have on an electric type is electric, fire, and ice. The second best coverage that you can have on an electric type is going to be electric, bug, grass, ice. So with that, you can pretty much hit everything. Uh, of course, this ice is hidden power ice. So uh, you can swap that up for things like hidden power ground for heat ran, for example, which is actually something you guys are going to see in my team builder uh, later this week for uh, NPL miners uh, for week one. Uh, I actually brought HP ground on Vikavolt for heat ran. So um, the match already happened, so don't worry about it. But yeah, it's pretty much the team, guys. It's pretty straightforward. Eric, the uh, Weezing, and Loxus, the uh, Vikavolt. If you know where these uh, nicknames are from, comment down below. Uh, let me know that you are you two are a weeb, and uh, I will like your comment, of course, as I do with everybody else's. But it's pretty uh, pretty quick um, recap, actually, compared to what I usually go to, which is about 40 to 50 minutes. So I quickly skimmed over the mons. I wanted you guys to still understand why I picked what I picked. Uh, by the way, the last mon, which I'm still considering possibly getting, um, swapping out Vikavolt for, or making a huge trade and ending up with a rock type, is going to be Amistar. Amistar takes flying hits really, really well. But then again, you look at things like Thunderous and, and um, Zapdos and Tornadus, and most of those get access to Grass moves. Like, Grass Knot. <laughs> Three out of the four that I just named get Grass Knot. So it's not as effective. It's not. Amistar doesn't check what I need it to check. That's the thing. I, ne I need a check to the Thundies. And that's something that I don't necessarily have. So uh, I'm going to have to be careful with those. I actually go up against the Thunderous Incarnate week one. So yeah, that's going to happen. Anyway, that's the team, guys. That's your Montreal Havsols for uh, Season 7. Let's see if it's Season 7. Sorry, that's the Majors. Uh, season 4 of the NPL Miners. Um, we're hoping to take the title this time around. We do have, of course, our Kryptonite and League format week one. Jar. So uh, not sure how that's going to go over, but... Uh, even if we don't win that one, I'm very confident that this team, especially with the core of Cresselia plus Umbreon plus uh, Weezing, can carry me through uh, at least the playoffs. All, all I'm focusing on for now is making playoffs. Uh, if any trades are made, I will keep you guys updated. Uh, I will uh, put out a video and let you know. Uh, for now, by the way, concerning my channel, I want to focus mostly on league content for right now because I am in quite a few leagues. Uh, and I'm also going to be, well, actually, that's kind of a secret for now, so I won't reveal that yet, but anyway, um, I'm in the UPA, the NBA, the NPL Miners, as well as the Olympics, uh, which is something run by Kyle, uh, somebody that we play Rocket League with, he's also in the Pokemon community, and I am also in a clan war, so th there's just too many things going on, let me see if I can find anything else that I'm in. Uh, yeah, I gotta finish up the PCL and the GOT as well, so I'm not actually playing in those. Well, the PCL I'm gonna finish up just for the, the hell of it, but um, I'm technically in three leagues, gonna be four, hopefully, um, four by a couple of weeks from now, so there's gonna be a lot of league content coming through. Um, two to three are mandatory uploads, and one is not. The NBA is just for fun, it's just me, but it's me and my friends from our squad chat, and, um, <coughs> excuse me, we're drafting with the Ubers and stuff. I have Kyogre on my team. It's just, like I said, it's just purely for fun. I'm not even focusing on it, to be honest. Uh, it's just to, to have friendly games of Pokemon. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's the team. Like I said, if any changes occur, I will let you guys know. Uh, be looking out for the uh, matches as well as the, uh, the team builders. Team builders will be going up on Wednesday and matches will be going up on Thursday. So, uh, we're going to make it a two-part video, of course. Um... And uh, uploads for, yeah, like I said, Wednesday and Thursday. So be looking out for those. Uh, that's when uh, all of the miners are set to upload uh, their videos. Speaking of which, if you do want to go check out any of the other coaches, if you're interested in the NPL miners and want to know uh, what everybody else drafted, who else is in it, go check out the description down below. There will be a link to everybody's channels, um, including the majors as well. So if you want to go check out majors, uh, at the same time, you can do that. Uh, everybody will be uploading videos with the full list of uh, everybody's links in their descriptions, basically. We're, of course, here to help each other out. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, sorry about the, the long hiatus. Uh, as you guys know, I was recovering from a shoulder injury. Now I'm okay. Uh, so I'm going to be hopefully starting to upload a little bit more often. But like I said, I'm going to be focusing a lot more on league content than I am on anything else. So uh, don't expect too many showdown lives. Uh, I've kind of gotten... Uh, annoyed of playing ladder lately so i'm gonna try to steer clear of that for now 
Uh, but yeah, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Again, go check out everybody in the description down below as well. And I will catch you guys very, very soon. Peace.